It's new product time. We got a lot of stuff going on here. New okay. products. All right. Um, you want to do this? Yeah. Okay, I'm just let's start. About. Okay. First up, this is the coming soon. These will be in shortly. This is Simon Monk. Make your own PCBs with Eagle. We sell Eagle. So Simon Monk, who is a prolific author on the Adafruit Learning System, has his own book about making PCBs with Eagle. Everyone wanted to know this. And, you know. I mean, will. there's good tutorials online, but this is a book yeah. that takes you from step by step. And, and there's also, like, there's a lot of, like, tips and tricks that you may not get if you just use online tools. There's a lot of tips that like I didn't understand how to do like invoking and like you can like swap library parts, like all these weird things. Anyways, this book will cover it and it's like a very like step by step system of learning. So yeah. I some of excellent instructor. Okay, so, so sign up. The book will be here in a couple days, but we got that. Okay. Uh, next up, we also have another coming soon. This is the Adafruit Unce. This is the open source uh, eight by eight. And it is one of the coolest things to behold. I think we showed this on It's Not Out yet last week. Yeah, I think so too. So it's up for a sign up. Um, these are going to go really fast. So if you want one, sign up right away. It's a, again, it's a using that USB MIDI um, code that we did. Yeah. Uh, we did with the Flora and Leonardo. So it's a true USB device. And it's kind of like an open source grid controller that is all Arduino. It's laser cut. You can like modify. I want to show you how you can. Um, Easily use a plate and add pots on the side yeah. of the encoders. All sorts of cool stuff. I think so we're going to see these used quite a bit. Okay. Okay, next up. This just arrived today, um, and it's in the store. This is probably going to be one of the next um, kind of foundational, is that a word? Foundation books for people who are yeah. getting into electronics. So Make Electronics by Charles Platt is one of the books that we recommend. This is Make More Electronics Ooh. by... Charles you Platt. like electronics? Here's more. So yeah. this is like the, the continuation of the previous book. So we, we, I think we got a sample, and we're going to be carrying this. So sign up, and we'll let you know as soon yeah. as we get them in stock. Uh, Charles Platt, probably one of the best instructional authors on analog electronics, analog electronics, electronics and yeah. more. This is really good low-level stuff. If you want like a good introduction to low-level, okay. this is excellent. It teaches you like the foundation. Next up. Um, so I wanted to show the end result first. These are the shirts that you can make with mm -hmm. these uh, kits. Mm -hmm. And we saw these and we're like, wow, these are really cool. They're finally available to like the world. This is a technique that uh, it's been out there. So you put on this ink, you block yeah. the light, you expose it, and then you wash it and you get this again. This is what the end result is. These it's are really cool. It's basically like photolithography, yeah. but with, um, hello, with, yeah. um, with ink that you can like fabric dye. Yeah. So in, instead of having to have like a film and a stencil and you squeegee, which is like really messy and like it's always really hard to do silk screening, yeah. this kind of lets you do silk screening but like one off where you not just as messy. Have, it's, <laughs> and it's not as messy because you're just doing it where you're not like squeegeeing this ink. Yeah. You just you just expose whatever you want. So it's kind of an interesting uh, UV uh, sunlight. Um, yeah. We have so to die. we have a few of these. So this is from Lumi. This is the photo printing kit. And we have a couple different types. These are some photos of the boxes. Yeah, we have one for t-shirts. We won't have one that comes with a bag. Like you make a bag and then yeah. there's one that's for paper. So there's a couple different ones. And they all use the same ink. They're just different like system kits. Some have more than the other. Some are meant for like, it comes with the, the like this one comes with a bag. Yeah. And you, you know, you basically... Um, I think it's already soaked and you actually just lay it down with all the stuff that you want to have exposed. Like this t-shirt uses a transparency, so you can use transparencies yeah. as a way of doing it. So that's a lot easier than like silk screen. Again, there's no weird exposure lights or anything. You just put it out in the sun. And since it's summer, it's a really good season to do these projects. Yeah, and they have this cool like iPhone app and everything. It's like, it's pretty cool. It's like a, we saw this and we're like, oh, this is and something. Yeah, it's interesting. It's an, it's an old skill that they're revitalizing, which I like. Yeah. What we found is once people start to get into electronics and making and hang out on the Adafruit site, go to the show and tell, see Ask an Engineer, look at the wearable electronics videos, look at the 3D printing videos, hang yeah. out on all of the places that we, we publish the stuff, they want to do more. They're like, oh, you know what? Like, why should I just wear a boring T-shirt when I can make my own designs on a T-shirt? Yeah. The world becomes something that they can make, hack, Mod. Here, wear this hat. I will. I, 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 I will wear this hat in a bit. This okay. is a special code hat, but All I can't, right, well, I can't do it right now. All right, we'll wear the code hat later. Then. Okay. That's fine. Uh, next up, Lady Ada, we have a case, and this is the new Beaglebone metal case. Yeah, this is the new. We have the same kind of case, but for Pi. This is the bottom, so it's kind of boring. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Okay. This is the. Um, yeah, this is a case. It's from a, it's an American company that 
does their own machining. And this is a Beagle Bone Black case, and it's kind of a, an elegant case. It has a little bit of the sort of like a G3 Mac. Is this the G3? This, does it look like? That's the old, yeah, the, G, the G3, G3 the G4s, G4, yeah. Or whatever. Anyway, it has that kind of style. Has these like air holes at the tops, nice ventilated, and it, you can mount the Beagle Bone Black in it. And it's, it's actually a very beautiful case. Very lovely, very well made if you want a solid aluminum case. Um, there's two tops. One top has the GPIO pins exposed. One is kind of fully covered. I don't know. Check it out. Yeah. We uh, we have a couple of big and black cases now, but we wanted something that was yeah. Durable. This is this is on the high end scale. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next up. What are these? Okay, this is a, an edge launch SMA connector. Right. Which I need for... That was going to be my first guess. <laughs> yeah, good good guess. Which I'm going to be using for the um, future cellular Wi-Fi type projects we're going to be doing. And I actually just want to show on the overhead real fast how you connect it. This is, I'm going to show the, the thicker sure. PCB one. And this is okay. a good time to uh, maybe focus and such. Yeah. Hello. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. Meanwhile. Um, so this is the connector over here, which you can see, and it'll, it'll come into focus in a second. There you go. Um, yeah, that's about as good as it can get. Yeah, can you uh, lower the brightness a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, it's an edge launch connector, and it, you basically have these three, like, pads, and then the connector launches out the edge of the PCB, and then it you know, kind of hugs the edge, so you have, like, two connections down here for ground, two connections for ground down here, and then um, a signal line. And uh, we had the ones for standard thickness PCBs, and this is the standard thickness PCBs. And now we have ones for half thickness PCBs. So if you're doing some RF work, you may have decided to you know, uh, control your impedance by having um, the PCB be half thickness, so for closer traces. In that case, you want a thinner one. So this one is much thinner. If you can go to, uh, not that one, the... The one with the quarter on it? Uh, no, the first photo. You can go to the first photo. Yeah, you can see in this photo that the two legs, this slot in between is only 0.8 millimeter. So it's really good for like half thickness or even thinner PCBs. Anyways, for RF people, you know you want it. Okay. Okay, I want to just like really quickly while you go to the next thing. Sure. Um, next up, I can start talking about this. Yeah. This is an iPhone case, believe it or not, that does the wireless charging. Yeah, this is the Pixel Key. We're gonna have more Pixel Key stuff or Pixel yeah. Chi. We're gonna have um, this is, would you call this the Chi wire, wireless charger. Qi wireless charger. Yeah, and here it is. This is actually my phone, and this it works. This is your phone charging. Yeah. So it lets you use uh, an iPhone 5S, is what you have. Yeah, with the lightning, 5S. with the lightning connector, the little. Five I have pins. a few phones for testing, but that is one of them. No, but this this case this case only works with the 5S. That's right. Because it has the lightning connector, and it might work with the 5C, but we don't have one, so I'm not sure. Um, and it slips on, and it uses the, the, the little chi bracket that we have, but it, it's pre-connected to the lightning bolt thingy, and then it charges, so you can just put it down on, on the uh, chi charger plate that we have here. Um, we're going to have chi transmitters, which basically allow you to build the plate that it's charging on top of. We don't have those in yet, so we're just kind of getting all those things ready. That's why we have this kind of weird, like, iPhone accessory. But in the future, you'll be able to make your own yeah. wireless charging plate. I think it's actually a really slim did a case. Good, did it's a good like job with the skinny. design. She is like, it's a really nice standard. It's a very slim um, coil. Good control. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you can see the metal uh, shielding plate. All right, next up. Next up. Uh, this is from Pololu. This is from Pololu. And this is, I don't remember the distance. I think it's, like, up to 20 centimeter distance sensor from Sharp. Um, I don't remember the exact centimeters. Maybe you can look, somebody can look it up and post it in the chat. Um, this is a little breakout for a Sharp distance sensor. And uh, Pololu made a lovely breakout and we're like, hey, like, why make it? You guys did a good job. So we're carrying it. And I think it's an analog output um, chip. It has a little bit of control logic. And uh, it's just an IR distance sensor. It bounces IR light and measures um, the, the bounce uh, reflection, not the time of flight, but it like can read like the angle and tells you how far it is away and stuff. And it is a pretty good job, good for robotics if you're doing like wall detection or you put it on the ground to measure if it's going to fall off a ledge. Okay, and then next up, we have an entire run of different displays. Now, how do you want to handle this? You want me to Let's just, just like... go through them. Okay. okay. So actually, let, I, this was the one I actually have up here, so this is a good one to do right now. So can we, uh, can we go to the red? Yeah, so okay. I'm just going to show these photos. So this, this is a five inch screen with a mini HDMI driver. Oh wait, no, you're, you're, you're going too you're far. Yeah, it's just all mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. Can you show this one only? I'm just going to show this one only. No, but on the overhead. Yeah. Yay. Okay. And let me, uh, 
Let me turn this off. This is, I don't think this is necessary. Okay, so um, so you can see the screen much better. Uh, so this is a five. Ooh, what'd you do? It's really nice. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Um, so this is a five-inch diagonal screen, and it's 800 by 480. And hold on, I gotta turn on this little keyboard. Hello. Okay, so you got a little mouse, and it's just running X. And this is driven by a little um, HDMI driver, has HDMI in, and then there's this cable, and we have this like cable adapter thingy. And what's nice about this one, oh, and there's a little keyboard, so you can like, um, you can do things. You can like, you can like set the color and like brightness and all that good stuff. Um, and you can also change the, uh, uh, change the input. Uh, sorry, you can actually only have HDMI, but you can change like the color and contrast and like flip the display if you want. Um, so it only has HDMI input, and it connects like for example to this Raspberry Pi here. And what's nice is that it can power itself from a USB port. So this power cable is connected to a USB port, and as long as you're powered into a wall adapter that has like up to an amp, you can power this display. It just needs like 500 milliamps and it has like HDMI quality and it's really good looking and it's like really crisp and it's like very, very fast. And because it's like native HDMI, all the um, graphics optimized stuff for HDMI works with it. So we have this in uh, five inch with this little mini driver. And then we also have this yeah. with the larger driver, which is the... This one? Uh, Oh, no, sorry, the, the larger driver we already have in the store. Okay. That's why I don't have it here. Yeah, so what I had, is, um, these are just other photos. This of is the, yeah, this is the 7-inch uh, uh, 1280 by 800 display. So this is a really um, high-quality, high-resolution display that uh, does have a larger driver. It uh, doesn't have a touch screen, but it's, like, super high-res, and... Um, doesn't have audio. We already had the version with audio, and this one doesn't. It's a little bit less expensive. Okay. That's for the final product. Can you uh, pull that to the okay. end? Okay. How, how did... I don't you, understand why these are like this. These are exactly the way they came in. I don't know. <laughs> can you, can uh, you put that at the, at the end, this that image? Just point to the one you want more. Okay. Uh, that one. Great. Okay. We also have 7-inch displays that are 800 by 480. So we should... the. We have 1280 by 800 displays, and they're like super high resolution. They're from tablets. They're like super good looking. We also have these seven inch displays that are um, 800 by 40 resolution, and they're a lot less expensive because they're not as high resolution. Um, but they are really good looking, and they're super bright. Can you go to the next photo? We have one with a little mini driver. Again, it runs off of um, a USB port and has HDMI connectivity. And then here's a version showing text, so it's like really good quality text, and here's showing it all laid out, some kind of high need cable. And you can see the power cable is a USB port. Okay. And then skip ahead. And then we have a version with the larger HDMI, VGA, and composite driver. So if you have VGA output or composite output and you still want to use the screen, we have that driver. So we're going to have a tutorial to talk about all these different HDMI drivers, but basically we uh -huh. have all these screens. And sometimes you have only HDMI, you can use the MIDI driver. Sometimes you want to use VGA, you need the larger driver. Um, sometimes you want like super high resolution IPS, and so you have to pay more for the screen. So we have a, a okay. really wide range of screens. What would you use these for? There, and there's like so many of them that I like... I know, there's a lot. We've like, a, they all, and they all look, they all came in at the same number? Or like, I don't know. They all, came in, they all came in the same time because we, we, shot, we shot them all at once and we put them all in the store. Um, we, we're talking these mostly for use with Raspberry Pi, although it works with anything that has HDMI so out. So little arcades or something? You like, could use it for arcades. You can use yeah. it with your Xbox. You can use it with a Windows computer. You can use it with a Mac that has um, HDMI output or VGA output. Anything make, that has make your own, video. Uh, like ebook readers and stuff? You, anything. Well, I mean, it would be a DIY tablet. Whatever. Anything okay. that you want to screen. And HDMI is pretty universal. And the HDMI works with BeagleBone Black. We tested it, and gotcha. with Raspberry Pi, and any other future ah, single board computer. I see what you're doing. So basically, all these like embedded Linux things all have HDMI out. That's why you got this going on. Yeah. So I have oh, these okay. little screens, and they just it's like it's, they're, they're little screens that work really well with all of them, and um, they're like you know about a hundred bucks or so. But you get like a really nice resolution screen. They're much nicer than the low cost. Um, like car TV screens, which have composite and they don't have like really clear pixels, like you can't actually see very well. These are all like really, really high quality because they're HDMI, so it's okay. digital. All right, and then uh, last, uh, no, we have two more things. Two more things. This is the Pi, the, Pi Spy. The, the Spy camera for Raspberry Pi. It's a little tiny uh, camera that plugs into the Raspberry Pi, so super, super tiny that you can. Yeah, this is a little. 
camera, and I don't know what it was originally made for. Yeah. Um, but it works with the Raspberry Pi, and it's a little miniature, like, pinhole camera. And it's super teeny, which I thought would be really useful if you, and the, the cable is very flexible and long, so you can thread it around and maybe um, put the camera in something that the, you know, official Raspberry Pi camera would be too big for. So it's kind of an alternative to that. Um, I tried it out, worked really well with all the normal Raspi still and Raspi vid stuff. Um, same resolution, same quality, same everything. I think it's the same chipset for the camera. Okay. But um, so I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I'll pick up a couple of these and see what people do with them. Okay. And uh, last up, we're at the end here. Yay. This is um, this is kind of an interesting one. Hold on, let me grab it from okay. over here. Um, this is a. Hold on. Sorry. That's all right. All my tools. I got plenty this of photos. Is a, uh, this is a 40-pin TFT friend, which is a <laughs> device that I created in-house for when I was messing with all these displays that you saw. Like, a lot of them have 40-pin connectors. And I did all this prototyping, and the thing about these is they have a backlight that has seven LEDs in a row, and so you need a boost converter that can do, like, constant current boost. So I made this little breakout board that breaks out all the pins so you can breadboard or wire, and it has a little boost converter on the left. You can kind of see a little inductor and a chip. So... It can boost, and you can set the current to be like 20 to 100 milliamps. And I use this, for example, I have um, a demo here. Maybe I can show it really fast, but um, hold on. I'm going to orient this on the overhead. Okay. So yeah, here it, here it is. Here's the, the connector. So you use this so you can do all the Yeah, so this is that same stuff. screen. Okay. And then um, this is connected to here, and then you can see I can put it into a breadboard. And then, hold on, let me um, grab a USB cable. And um, this allows me to, to do, like, put, like I'm wiring it up to this uh, TFP4401, which is an a, a HDMI driver chip. Um, but it's like, I don't want to have to, like, you know, put the connector on the, the breakout, and then I don't even know if the wiring is correct. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can power this up here. I'll see if it boots up. But, um, <clears throat> um, but yeah, this, this flex cable comes down here, and it, con it connects to this breakout. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. There you go. So yeah, you can see like I'm you know testing out this display and I'm like, oh, this is not quite right. Didn't wire it quite correctly, but um, I can have you know this uh, HDMI chip control this display with this breakout because it's easier for me to plug it into the breadboard and like I can wire up the blue, red, and green wires and the control wires and and play around with it and try different displays and I don't know, I just thought that was handy. If anyone out there ever like uses dot clock displays, this is like a super handy little board to have. So okay. I thought I'd put it in the store and like it's like ten bucks. Yeah. For other people. I like it when you release the tools that you use to get your job done here. It's very yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, they're not like the super most popular products in the store, but I, I'm like, this is so useful. Like, yeah, me as And well. I couldn't find anything like it out there, which was really annoying, so I had to like design okay. this board. Anyway, so uh, yeah, if you use dot clock displays and they're 40 pins, you probably want this thing. All right. And with that is new products. Good work, Lady Ada. We have too many HDMI displays. People buy these so we don't have to... I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to write a tutorial about how all the different displays. Maybe next week we'll talk about it.